Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Bible study here at Black Mountain Fellowship. Uh, we're gonna, uh, let's first get started in the word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your understanding. Father God, we thank you for uh, giving us a mindset to want to serve you. We thank you for uh, the spiritual enlightenment that you've given us. We thank you for the uh, blessings that you bestowed upon us, both naturally as well as uh, spiritually. Father God, we thank you right now. Father God, that we're able to uh, have faith in you no matter what we're going through, no matter what the circumstance, but Father God, faith in you uh, is pleasing to us all, and we thank you for that. Thank we you. thank you for uh, life, health, and strength. We thank you for those things that we often take for granted. Uh, we thank you for family. We thank you for friends. We thank yes, you for uh, yes. members of, uh, that are in the body of Christ. We thank you for, uh, Father God, we thank you for everything. We thank you for uh, just being able to have one more day in grace, oh God. Uh, each day that we're able to live in grace, each day that you tarry, uh, we're one day closer to you. And Father God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we thank you for we're confident in that truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, we're going to get started in uh, Acts chapter 4. Uh, if many of you, I went to, I went online and did a study, a preview for what we we're going to get into today, and I kind of gave a brief synopsis of what we're going to get into today, and I, I'll start to do that. Uh, I'll try to put them up by, by uh, Sunday. I'll try to get it down and put it up by Sunday, so I'll try to do that. And uh, I had a, a question on there about uh, Acts chapter number 4, verse 11. Anybody know what scripture he was referencing? Psalms 118 and 22. Psalms 118 and 22, okay, good. Uh, so I, I'll be putting some, some, some things in there, so be sure to watch it. Uh, because it, it gives you, I just wanna, I want you to see that too. Because when you're studying the Bible and you really try to get the details of the word, anytime a scripture is referenced, and somebody's quoting it, it's always good to see uh, the reference of that scripture and what they meant and what they were trying to say. Uh, and we'll get to, I'll get to it once we get there uh, because there's something I wanted you to see in there. That's why Peter was quoting it. And uh, uh, we'll get there. But we started off in Acts 4 and chapter number, uh, uh, Acts 4 verse number 5 is where we, kind of where we left off. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just read from there a couple of verses, then I'll come back to explain it. Uh, it says, And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and uh, uh, Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, and said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day uh, be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Uh, what we have here is Peter and John, who were uh, two, two of the main apostles to the nation of Israel. Uh, and we see that they're speaking at this time to the religious leaders, uh, uh, the religious leaders of Israel, and the people. Uh, they're speaking about the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and uh, and, and uh, as an apostle, they were to be witnesses of the resurrection and also preach about the resurrection. Uh, when you, uh, as we look, take a look at verse number seven. It says, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have ye done this? Now, all of the high priests there were together, and that, uh, as you remember, what they're referencing is what when Peter's first miracle in Acts 3, where it says a certain man was lame from his mother's womb, mm -hmm. uh, that's, what they're, that's what's in, it's in question right here. And so they're asking them, uh, by what power, by what name have you done this? Uh, that's what they're asking about them. Look at what it says in verse 8. It says, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto what? Said unto them, and what did he say? Ye rulers of people, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. If we, if, if, before I say that, back in Luke, uh, Jesus told them, "Be not to take no thought about what you should say, for I will speak for I, I, I will speak for you. Don't take, don't meditate on what you should say or what you should answer, because I will speak for you." 
Uh, this this reference of filled with the Holy Ghost. When it talks, anytime it says filled with the Holy Ghost in your Bible, it's always talking to. Uh, uh, it's always reference to them speaking forth the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's what. That's the only thing that being filled with the Holy Ghost is, because Jesus told us that the Holy Ghost, when He comes, it will only come to speak about Me. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it's only going to uh, fill you to speak about Jesus Christ. Right. People say, oh, the Holy Ghost keep me and taught me this and do this and do this. Mm -hmm. Listen, the only, the only thing the Holy Ghost comes to do is, is, is indwell you and to help to speak about Jesus Christ. That's the only thing it comes to do. Right? So anything else that people try to make up, that's not scripture. See, and when we look at it, in the Old Testament and time past, you had God the Father, Jehovah God, who worked back here. In the four Gospels, now you have God the Son. And in the book of Acts and all the way till today, now you have God the Holy Ghost. So they all worked in their particular person, right? So, so that's what we're seeing here. And uh, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like today, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Anytime you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have to be sitting in the church. You don't have to be, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking a, a, a word of exhortation to somebody. Right? That's, what, that's why there's one baptism, but there's many feelings. Mm -hmm. See, because you can always be filled, but there's only one baptism. Because Jesus only died one time. Right? So Jesus only died one time. So there's one baptism, spiritual, for us today. But then there's many, uh, there's, there's many feelings. And what Peter is doing here, he was filled with the Holy Ghost to tell these people, verse 9, If we this day be examined of the good deed, done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by what? by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole see it's only by the power of, and that's what Peter is saying the focal point of ministry should always be about Jesus Christ Peter was not concerned about, oh, I'm so great that I laid my hands on him and he was healed. Peter is only concerned about Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's filled with the Holy Ghost. It, all, it means to speak forth the word of God and to speak about Jesus Christ. And notice who he's talking to, to all the people of what? Israel. Once again, the only people that are there are Israel. And he's talking to not only the religious leaders, but also uh, the people of Israel, right? Verse, uh, verse 11, it says, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Uh, now, as we look at this issue, the, the builders there are the uh, religious leaders of that day who rejected Jesus Christ, right? The stone represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why when he told Peter, Upon this rock I'll build my church. Right, so that's so that's what that is. Uh, it's the stone now that has has become the corner, the st uh, uh, that has become the uh, head of that corner. Mm -hmm. So as we see this, what Peter is telling them is that the, the what you guys rejected, he's become the head now. He's become he is the Messiah that was prophesied about. Mm -hmm. And it's funny how the religious leaders should have known this. Mm -hmm. These are the people who are supposed to be teaching them about God's God's truth back then. Right? They were supposed to be teaching the, the, uh, the people about the truth, but this is, they're the ones that did the rejecting. Right? Verse 12. Uh, and this is a quote also from Psalms 118.22, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, go there with me real quick. Let's read that, because I want, want you to see something. <clears throat> Psalms 118.22. Look at verse 22, Psalms 118, 22. The stone which the builders, what? Refused, right? They refused it back then, but in Acts 4, they rejected it, right? See, because they refused it because he had not come. It was a being prophesied. So back here, they couldn't reject yet. They had to refuse the teaching, right? So notice that. It says they refused it. It's become the headstone of the corner. Look what it says, verse 23, this is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. And verse 24, this is the day which the Lord hath made, we would rejoice and be glad in it. Right? So, so go back to Acts 4, I wanted you to see that before the cross, they could only refuse the teaching. 
They couldn't necessarily reject it yet, but they did reject it. That's what Peter is saying here. The stone, the, the, the stone which was set at the north of you builders, uh, which has become the head of the corner, they rejected it now. Verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name of the heaven given among men, whereby we must be what? Say, even though Peter is talking to the Jews here, this is inner dispensation. Yes. Because there's no other name under heaven or on the earth by which man can be saved today. But the difference is back there in their program, we understand that they just had to trust and believe he was their Messiah. But today we glory in the cross work of Christ. We believe that he died on the cross uh, for our sins. And if you notice, every religion has a founder. You got Muhammad, you got uh, Joseph Blue and all these different people and all these different other religions, but all of them are dead. There's only one <laughs> Jesus Christ who has died but is risen and is living. Amen. We serve a living God, Amen. right? He's the only one that's living. Pastor Harvey, can, can you go back to Psalms 118? Mm -hmm. And uh, cause I hear a lot of people quote that scripture and I, wanna, I want you to explain the dispensational difference in that scripture versus us now because a lot of people come to the it's like a cliche now well, this is the day of the Lord has made us oh. judge and be glad so so that day that they were referring to uh -huh. wasn't our day exactly. that we're referring to exactly and that's a good that's a good point uh, and, and, and really what it said, and this is the day which the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it now when we quote that there is an appearing that we ought to rejoice in, Paul says, mm -hmm. not the coming. There's a difference. The day, this day that they're talking about is when God will do what he's going to do for Israel out here. Mm -hmm. That's not our day, right? Anytime it talks about that day, it's the Lord's day, right? What's so, Psalms 118 and 23, which is what we just read. Uh, I meant 24, I'm sorry. Okay. Psalms 118 and 24. So yeah, that's a good point to mention that we know that Psalms, even though we love to read the Psalms, it's a prophetic book. So everything in it is prophecy. So it's talking about and prophesying about that day, right? Because we see that he's prophesying about the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So so that's what it's supposed. To, that's what it's supposed. To, in that day when Jesus came, they were supposed to rejoice because the kingdom of heaven was at hand. They were supposed to rejoice. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but they didn't fulfill that particular scripture because they rejected it. But that's a good point to understand uh, the details of the scripture when you really uh, look at those things and look at the key words and details. Uh, go back to Acts 4. Acts 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned, and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I get a kick out of this verse. Uh, for the simple fact that you have these religious leaders in Israel, and our day is these people who have been to seminary school and the people who, you know, got Bishop MD, uh, all these different titles and all this in front of their names, you know, the Reverend Doctor, the Right Reverend, and all this kind of foolishness. Uh, you, you have all of these different names. Uh, these people who call, claim to be self-proclaimed theologians and, and, uh, and all these types of stuff, and you have uh, all they have all these religious degrees, but yet you have two fishermen who's mm -hmm. preaching the truth of God's word, mm -hmm. and these people looked at them and said, "These men are ignorant and unlearned." Mm -hmm. Right now, most of us would get a little upset <laughs> if somebody said that about us today, you know. But ignorant means you just don't know. So according to what these religious leaders were saying, they didn't think uh, Peter and John knew anything, right? But listen, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We just saw that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were filled with the Spirit of God. And once again, as we know it, they were filled at this time. But once again, we know that the Holy Ghost did not dwell in them. Mm -hmm. It fell upon oh, them, yeah. up on, upon this, up on them, right? So they were able to still speak the word of God because God had the Holy Ghost had fell upon them. It's the same way with us today. We speak the word of God today because the Spirit of God indwells in us. We have the everlasting Spirit of God, right? And the more we build up sound doctrine through Paul's 13 epistles, uh, we we're, that we're being filled with the Spirit. 
right? That's what that means. Uh, uh, verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, uh, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with what? With who? Jesus. Uh, when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you don't need a seminary school. You see, people glory in school and going to seminary school and all these different things. But when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, you don't need these things. Right? You don't need, the, you don't need these things. Uh, it's funny because when we were doing the, uh, for IRS purposes, for the church, the uh, filing the 501c3 and all of that, they asked you, what kind of seminary institution did you attend? <laughs> and really, I wanted to put, uh, uh, I got the word, don't worry about that, I got the truth. You know, that's, that's what I really wanted to put on there, but you got to put something, right? So, so but, but, but when you see that, everybody wants us to learn, everybody wants us to know, uh, be in some type of seminary school. But when you go to seminary school, they teach you the history of the Bible. Their seminary school will actually teach you not to believe God's word. Because they're going to teach you not to take it literally. Right? So so that's what it is. They're gonna teach you to allegorize and spiritualize everything. So Pastor, where did you tell them you went? What's that? Where did you tell them you I went? I told them I went because I I, I I was attending the Great School of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that institute. Uh I haven't I haven't really been going, but uh I did attend that. But uh that's what I put on the paper because I, I have attended it. I haven't finished it yet, but I have attended it. So that's what I put on the paper. Uh, but it's all because they want you to have some type of religious or some type of schooling behind it. But the knowledge that I have comes strictly from God and strictly from the Holy Ghost. The knowledge that I'm being filled with, I just pray, read this Bible, and God illuminates my mind to it. Right? So, so, so that's what it is. You don't need a seminary school. Now, God provides teachers in every dispensation to teach his word, right? But, but understand that seminary school will teach you to go against God's word because they only teach you history, which is, history is not bad. It's good to know, you know, the history of the Bible, what place did they did this, what place did they do that, when they went here, when they went there. History is good, but understand, when it comes to the truth of God's word, God will provide you. He is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The more you seek after God's truth, the more he'll fill you with his Holy Ghost. Right? And Pastor, I was just thinking how there is nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Because what they're doing today, they was doing it right here. Uh -huh. Because the Pharisees and these Sadducees, they were making their tradition equal with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. With what God was That's saying. Right. They was making right. it equal to what the, um, the God, God's word. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I was thinking about the scripture up above, verses up above where they were greatly, the Sadducees and Pharisees were mm -hmm. greatly disturbed uh -huh. because they were preaching the resurrection yeah, of the dead. Uh -huh. And I thought about you and Pastor L. Page in the old church mm -hmm. where we came from. Those people, when y'all started preaching this dispensation of grace, they became greatly disturbed. Mm -hmm. So you see, ain't nothing new here. Right. And what was, what's happening now, it was happening mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And I say, Lord, I just thank you because this, this fourth chapter here, mm -hmm. it just opened up like a window had just been mm -hmm. opened. And I could just see them sitting in that Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. just in, taking counsel against our Jesus. And then mm -hmm. uh, how they put it together, now Why look at that problem? Masonic prophecy Why being fulfilled it? in them with the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, this thing just began to just open up. God's word is just opening it's, up. Come on, man. And the 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 the, 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 the uh, common denominator in these situations, in our situation, and also in the scripture, is that the people holding the truth of God's word were the ones being persecuted. <laughs> so, and that's the thing about it. And the people who thought they knew it because they had been traditionally entangled mm -hmm. for so long, they were the ones doing all the rejecting. So when you stay true to God's word, everything will happen just how God wants it to happen. Amen. But that's a good point, and that's a good uh and, and, and the more you hear sound doctrine, you, God has no choice but to open up his word. Amen. Because he said, if you want to get close to me, you draw near to me, I draw near, nigh to you. Right? If you push away from me, God is not going to chase you. Because he's not going to force you to do anything. But when you want to know God's truth, he's there waiting on us Amen. to give it to us. And, how we, we are still considered unlearned and ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the thing about it. 
the more you witness to people with this message, the more they're going to call you ignorant and unlearned. Because this is what, and I encourage you to do this, uh, I do this, when I talk to people now, listen, when I, I talk to people, don't give me anything that you've been taught or think, give me scripture. Amen. Don't give me, I don't want to hear, because I'm not going to give you that, I'm just going to give you this word, Amen. right? Even if you've got to pull out your Bible, pull it out, right? If you don't remember the verses, pull it out, because you know where to go. So that's what you tell people now. Because what happens is people take the Bible, they read it with a preconceived thought and concept of what they've been taught and what they think it should say, mm -hmm. and they don't understand the truth of God's word, mm -hmm. right? That's what anything, most people go into any situation like that. They already have a thought because I've been taught and it's supposed to happen this way, and then what happens is when your experience don't meet the expectation, mm -hmm. now something's wrong, mm -hmm. right? So when you study the Bible, forget everything you've been taught. Even when you hear from me or uh, Pastor El Page or anybody teaching me grace message, you still have to study it out. Because the, th the thing about it is that I'm human. I'm fallible. I may make a mistake, even though I study every day. But God has been filling me with the Holy Ghost in order to teach the people, right? And, and, and my job is to get in the Word and study constantly, like I do all the time. And that way God will fill me at, when, when needed, and I'm able to speak a word. But the Bible is infallible. I'm fallible. So that's why you still have to study for yourself. And when you mm -hmm. said that, how you have those preconceived um, thoughts and things, mm -hmm. when I work, when I go to somebody's house, I already have your criminal record, all the problems you've been having, mm -hmm. but unless they are a mass murderer, I do not even read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wait to give them a chance because if I go in there looking at <coughs> you know, you start saying, well, dang, they've been stealing or they've been in jail. You know, all these things, before I can help them, mm -hmm. I've already made up my mind uh, that they're exactly. guilty. Exactly. And many times when you go in and you let them tell their own stories, mm -hmm. what really happened, you'll find out the child protective investigators were wrong. Mm -hmm. exactly. This is not even the situation. Yeah. It's written up wrong. But if you read it before, mm -hmm. nobody can even tell you that because it's already there. Yeah, it's just right. human nature. Yeah. 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 That it's already right. in your mind. Yeah. It's hard to to get away yeah. from that, uh -huh. so it is with the religion. Uh -huh. We've already been taught so much that it's so hard yeah. for people to change Amen. the way they think. Yeah. And that's, and that's why we have to be patient in this in this gospel. You have to be patient in the mystery. That's why it's a mystery. Because a mystery is a mystery, whether even though it's it, uh, Paul says Jesus Christ has been preaching to the angels, seen among men, but he's still a mystery. Nobody can figure God out. He's still a mystery. So that's why we have to be patient and witnessing. Because we were once in, in that arena where we couldn't see anything. Right? Because I, I personally remember if somebody asked me a question, I go on what I've been taught, but then I go also on what I've been studying. So once the two meet, there's my answer. But when I really start focusing on God's word, as opposed to how what I've been taught, because I started to see that people would say things that wasn't scripture, but say it as scripture. And so that made me realize, not that these men were so bad, but that I needed to study for myself. Right? And the more I brought it to their attention, the more they stopped saying it. Because it wasn't scripture. Mm -hmm. See, but that's why you have to be careful and know the Bible for yourself. Now, I can get up here and make it sound real good. And it'll sound like scripture. But it don't have to be scripture. Right? There are a lot of, there are a lot of morally good things that I can say. It sounds like scripture, but it's not scripture. So don't take everybody and anybody at their word. You've got to study it for yourself. That's why I'm always giving you scripture so you can read it for yourself. It's nothing more important than reading this word for yourself. If a person is talking to you about the Bible, they should be able to show you where it's at. Amen. Even if they don't know it, they should be able to show you where it's at. At least the book. You know, so 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 they should be able to show you where it's at. So so that's what you see there, and that's a good point that even when we're witnessing, we have to be patient. Understanding that we were once blind by religion. Amen. Right? Amen. But now we have the truth of God's word. We have to share it with other people. But you gotta be patient. <laughs> right now, now, when God really illuminated me with this, it, I just took off. But I remember asking the other, uh, Pastor L. Page, I wonder if somebody had told me what I just re what I re what I have rejected. Right? I wonder if I had been told what I had rejected because there's a lot of people I've told rejected it. So, <laughs> so but I wonder <laughs> myself what I have rejected. You know, and so, but uh, but I, I didn't have to I didn't have to go through that. So. 
But it, it, it's, 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 it's interesting how these people perceive these men to be unlearned and ignorant, but yet they had the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, verse 14. And beholding the man, no, go, no, go back to verse 13. I missed something there. Unlearned and ignorant men, they what? Marvel. They were surprised mm -hmm. and they took knowledge of them. Notice now, they may call you ignorant and unlearned. Mm -hmm. But they're gonna be they're gonna be surprised. Yeah. They're gonna take notice what that they had what? Been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They gonna know. When you give people this word, they gonna know. For, for their own religious pride, they may say certain things, but they know. You go in the uh, I was talking to a bishop and uh he began to speak to me about the religion of the church, which you know he he, he mentioned to me, he said, I know you probably don't want to hear it, and in my mind I'm thinking, yeah, I don't. But I uh, but I allowed him the time to speak. And he spoke to me, and then when I began to speak, he was marvelled at what I knew. Mm -hmm. Right? So, 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 but, 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 but the thing about it is that the reason he marvelled is because he had a preconceived thought that he probably already knew more than me. That's right. So, so when I began, he when, when he began to open his Bible, and I began to tell him the scriptures without my Bible, mm -hmm. he was he, he marvelled. Right. Not that I'm so great, but because I was filled with the Holy Ghost at that time. Amen. I was able to speak Amen. forth the word of God. Amen. Right? So that's what God will do for you. That's what God will do for you. And I wanted you to see that when it says that they marveled and took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was just so excited about this um, script, these verses of scripture. But I went to Matthew as you spoke, Matthew uh -huh. 11 and 25 uh -huh. and how Jesus was talking and he thanked the Father uh -huh. of the, in heaven and earth and said because thou hast hid these things yes. from the wise yes. and the prudent uh -huh. but they revealed, he revealed them uh -huh. unto you or he illuminated you mm -hmm. and here it is these religious leaders with all these names in front of them. Mm -hmm. you know God hid the this, this, this stuff from them mm -hmm. and that's why they marvel because uh -huh. you're a young man you young mm -hmm. men yeah. and he illuminated and that's he why I was so amazed I was amazed that you and the older people that accepted it because they're more rooted in tradition. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? The way y'all embraced it, I was I was like really blew away because they was really on it. Mm -hmm. You know, when they've been in it 20, 30 years, you think they'll never come out of it as much. Because, I mean... But we've been, I've been unsettled for a long time and I think I remember Sister Roy is saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Something just ain't right. We just yeah. couldn't put our finger on it. Mm -hmm. exactly. But when we heard right, we automatically That's went right, right towards right. it like a magnet. Uh -huh. Because we knew that something was void, something was missing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't quite and exactly. I God, God knows I studied the word as best I knew how. That's right. And right. Right. I just, you know, and what I was hearing. It just wasn't, you know, it was, wasn't there. But when you're in a place for the moment, it's like being in Rome. When you're in Rome, you do what the Romans do. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. all we knew. Exactly. That's See, all I, we knew. We were still uneasy. Yeah. Exactly. I was, I was crazy. I, I challenged the whole church. And I got to keep out of so many churches. Everybody crazy. And, 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 the thing about it, and the thing about it is that the spirit bears witness of itself. Okay. See, you can read the scriptures. But until the spirit bears witness of itself, and what that scripture means is that, listen, the spirit of God wrote this Bible. It's inspired by God. So when your, the spirit of God dwells in you, beats itself, it bears witness of itself. So when people are talking and you know it's not right, it bears witness of itself. You see that? So, so when you read the Bible, that's why every time you read it, that may be a different application depending on the situation that you're dealing with. But there's one truth and one interpretation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's maybe many applications dealing with what you're going through, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we have to remember with that there. There's one, there was only one approval method. The spirit can only approve the word. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can approve it. Mm -hmm. okay. No other doctrine can approve right. it. Yeah. Only God's spirit can approve God's word. Right. Go. And that's when it bear witness of itself. There you go, Jesus. there you go. And, and, and it's so powerful because when it begins to open up to you and you can begin to go back from scripture to scripture, that's the word of God opening up. Mm -hmm. See, that's the word of God bearing witness with your spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's a powerful, powerful thing. Even when, even when Kevin heard it, we was texting back and forth, mm -hmm. it was some stuff he didn't like, but he wasn't against it. Yeah. And then when he came to the house, that was it. Yeah. It was like, boom. That was it. That was it. And, and, and the thing about it is that 
that when people want to know the truth of God's word, mm -hmm. and, and as we've been talking about in our Romans Bible study on Sundays, God is just to give you just what you want. Mm -hmm. yes, See, if, you, if you're unsettled and you're looking for the truth of God's Jesus. word, he'll give it to you. That's why he sets apart. Now, I'm not the only person preaching it. Like Isaiah, though, uh, uh, not Isaiah, but Elijah thought he was the only one preaching. God said, I said about 7,000 men who have not kissed the foot of Baal. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm not the only one teaching it. I'm not foolish enough to think that. At the same time, God has blessed me to teach it. Because God has, put, no matter what dispensation, God put teachers in place. Right? People who want to learn more about God's word. When people don't come to the church or when people don't embrace this message, when people speak and open their minds, you can tell who they are and where their faith is. Mm -hmm. Because if they want to know the truth of God's word and they're unsettled, but over here you have the truth and they know it. Mm -hmm. And they don't come and don't want to hear it. That's because they don't want to learn. Some people are comfortable and complacent in God's That's word. Right, yeah. And most of those people, that, uh, I hate to say it, are the preachers. They're complacent in God's word. And when you have that, there's no growth. Right? There's no growth. A lot of people say in a church, young people means growth. It does in a natural sense. But people who spiritually understand and rightly divide means growth. Right. right, because you can grow, and you can tell this person. You can tell that's how you grow in God's word. Because if you don't understand God's word, you can't witness. Jesus, Sister Paul, Lori brought up a good point about preconceived mm -hmm. thoughts and they, you know, what they think about you. Y'all preaching the word of grace, mm -hmm. and whatever's been said, they already got it in their mind that y'all preaching against the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, all right, up front, they don't want to hear all the people that say, you're my friend, I miss you, I love you, mm -hmm. you know, I'm for you, and all this type of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You ain't seen them yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they already have it in their mind that they don't want to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And they don't write the Bible the word of uh, truth. So, they don't want to hear them play for and, 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 that's, and that's the thing about it is that, see, what happens is that we're going to get to a people follow personality <laughs> rather than the word of God. Amen. See, because it doesn't matter who brings the word. That's right. That's right. What matters is the message. When you follow people, uh, I, I think about it like this. Uh, Abraham. Abraham was an upright man before God. Lot followed Abraham. So it made Lot a little more vulnerable than Abraham. And then, so that made him imperfect, which on top of his imperfection. So then his wife followed him. You see? So when you continue to follow people, even though Abraham was upright, because you don't know God for yourself, his wife turned into a pillar of salt. You see that? You see? So you have to understand, don't follow the don't follow people, follow the message. You see, because the word of God is going to remain throughout the generations because he's promised to preserve his word. So, the, so it don't matter who's standing up here, because one day, uh, as long as the Lord tarry, I'm going to get up out of here. Right? And somebody else is going to be standing here preaching it. Right? So, so it doesn't matter. So some, some of you are older. You, you, I, you done heard 20, 30 preachers over your lifetime. The, the world goes on. The, as long as the Lord tarries, the word is going to go on. But the word of God must be taught. Mm -hmm. right. And so God will place about people that will teach his truth. And there'll be people that hear it, and there'll be people that reject it, even as they're rejecting it back in this day. That's right. Not, and you know what they, they started to tell us when we were when we were rejecting that word? Well, you should be obedient. When you're following a, a program or when you're following a church, mm -hmm. whatever they do, an organization, mm -hmm. you have to do that. So yeah. people start trying to Don't put your new guilt trip. Yeah. And I remember telling them, uh, you know, because I was teaching Sunday school, mm -hmm. I remember telling one of the other teachers, I'm not following nobody that's not following the word. I don't Amen. care about no obedience at that point. Yeah. Because I don't have to be obedient uh -huh. to somebody that's not that's you know that's right. against God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's why I tell you you you, you gotta be obedient if nothing else. And I really think a lot of the people it's like a cult. It's a cult. It's a cult. That's right. Yeah, and, and, and they, so they don't even know. They don't even know. It's like a cult because they can't get past that personality. And I can tell they don't read their Bible because you can tell when you talk to people where they are. There you go. I can tell by a conversation where people are. There you go. And, Especially when it comes to the word. That's it. Because the word, when you say the word, it's power. So you can tell when people speak the word or when they're speaking themselves. Because there's power in one.
but then there's no power in the other. Mm -hmm. See, I can all, if I, when I speak with power, that means I'm being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because on my own, I can't speak with that type of power. <laughs> you may think you can, but you can't. Right? And so what we're going to see, we're going to get to in verse 18 uh, about that. Because even when... Uh, Let's go to verse 14. But even when I was at the church, that's what was told to me before I got kicked out. Yeah. That if you are part of an organization, you do what the organization tells you, even if it's wrong. Yeah. Now, and what I replied was that I'm not a part of an organization. I'm a part of an organism. See, I'm not a part of the organization. I'm part of the organism, which is the body of Christ. That's the living. Mm -hmm. The organization is dead mm -hmm. because the founder is dead. Mm -hmm. Right? But the organism is still living. Right? So you're, we're part of organism. Don't be a part of an association. That's why there's no necessary no membership. You come in here to the truth of God's word because once you understand God's word from the rightly divided word, you have God's righteousness, and now you're a part of my church. That's the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. Verse 14. Uh, and beholding the man that which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing, nothing against it. <laughs>